so these conditions are not the best for seeing what the zoom can do but considering that this is what I fly in mostly under these conditions this zoom I can already tell that we're at a whole new level of detail and focus on the zoom so notice how it cut through all that nonsense and now we're right in focused on this chimney and we're gonna go all the way to 28 zoom which is maxed out on the Mavic 3 and I'm gonna punch in just a little tighter and I'm amazed with what I'm seeing right here this is clean usable footage and I'm gonna manually focus just a little bit and then I'm gonna change the lighting just to see what happens with the picture so you'll see me brighten it up a little bit I'm doing that myself not the camera and then I'm bringing it back down just to see what brought in the most amount of detail and notice when I zoom out it does have that jump and that's too bad that it has that it's something you're gonna to have to learn to live with um, but I'm just amazed look at this picture and look at what we had before so very nice on the zoom huge difference from the last time I tried to zoom in on that and I'm pretty happy with that zoom so you can see these are the conditions that I'm flying in right now of course I'm geared up with the wetsuit and you know I have all the time in the world to make this video and but these conditions are really poor as you can see and I'm not really sure what things I can focus in on so I'm just kind of scanning to, to see what's out there but I have some key points that I always focus on so I'm not sure if that was a sign that said something I couldn't tell so I'm just panning along looking for anything I might be able to spot and this is at full maximum zoom resolution you get an idea how far away I was I didn't want to zero in on any people so I, I kept with things real simple Just looking to see you know the detail what it goes through what it doesn't and I'm gonna focus in on this KFC right here and this is with no editing um, whatsoever this is just straight out of the camera And then this is going to be full maximum resolution on the zoom. So, not bad, not bad. Way better than it was before. And I'm going to do a few more zooms. And it's cold and it's windy and it's a nightmare out there so the fact that I'm getting any zoom ability to read anything is uh, amazing oh yeah there's this truck right here I think I zoomed in on that a little bit again I, I shied away from any kind of people or anything like that but this was interesting because I felt like it, it was a good zoom again it just focused right in right there I, that's usable footage for me once I edit that a little bit add a little bit of color that's gonna look really nice and then the cross this is always was my main thing for the focus So you'll see that jump 
there's nothing you can do about it right there's that jump but I don't mind it it's it kicks in now with a punch and I, and I like that I like that so yeah this was pretty awesome I think if it wasn't a blizzard outside or a whiteout I think this would have been pretty interesting um, I think I could count the number of events and we're just at a whole new level right here with the zoom so that's maxed in all the way 28 and I'm gonna back out yeah I'm pretty excited about the zoom I just wanted it to be a little bit better and I feel like we got even more than that so I'm sure they're gonna improve it still but for right now I think this is okay I feel like I could have fun with that zoom and make it usable because one of the things I wanted to be able to do was get a license plate number and I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do that yet but we'll see I give it a shot here but I don't think it qualifies so I'm gonna zoom in on this car and again underneath these conditions so let's watch for the punch and see if it focuses right in because before it was just blurry as hell so right there not too bad not too bad I'm watching this with you guys so yeah not quite qualified for that license plate number now it's not to say if it wasn't snowing as hard as it is that I might have been able to get it but right there that's kind of like my holy grail I'd like to be able to get a license plate number there just simply because I've been focusing on this for quite a while so I did a little manual focus, kind of came in, went out, and then I'm going to change the lighting a little bit, see if I couldn't pull it better. Oh, it's it's close. It's really close. It, obviously, I'm going to have to do it when it's not snowing, but I like the fact that under extreme conditions that this is what I'm getting. So there might be a few more zooms here. Again, no color added, straight out of the camera, and um, and this is what we're getting. So we could definitely use a little color grade, and that may that may help with the zoom also. So I'm not sure what I'm focusing on here. Ooh. I see what I should have focused on, but I didn't. There's another cross up there. I missed it. I did. I missed it. All right. I'll know next time. So it'll be interesting when I do this in absolutely perfect conditions, which who knows when that's coming. In, in my world, this is where we're living right now. So, oh yeah. So I take it up 400 feet and zoom in on my lunar pad. That lunar pad has saved the Mavic 3 from drowning in the snow. So that's been fantastic. If you don't know what that is, check it out on my website. You just strap in your batteries and your controller and the drone and you carry it. And then when you wanna use it to lift off, you just flip it over and use it as a launch pad. And there's a strap on the back and you can hold it and you can catch your Mavic 3 in midair. Super sweet. But too damn cold to do any hand catching of any kind. So yeah, this is just a quick pan up the river. Out to the lake. And I think there's a boathouse. The, there's a restaurant right on the corner. And I'm going to try to zoom in on that. So let's see if I get myself over there at some point yeah so those are what I call conditions for uh, living in Ohio winter oh I think I might have focused on my favorite tree yeah 
yeah the tree i think it got some focus so this was interesting because this tree is so photographic and of course i decided not to focus in on it i went back to the boathouse okay i remember this yeah so maybe the tree afterwards so i'm going to manual focus for a hot minute and i'm going to change the lighting to see if i got anything better and i like them both i like them both but i, I definitely like the lighting better and another quick manual focus and then i'm going to try to get the restaurant on the dock right here this is pretty far out so this has got to be around 2600 feet right there so that's rough but under the conditions it's good it's really good so let's see where i head to now so are we gonna get on the tree maybe it was in my imagination i don't know Maybe I never got to the tree. Maybe I skipped the tree. Obviously I'm flying. Lost. Oh yeah, this house. Okay. Yeah, this was just kind of to see how quick I could focus in on something. And, uh, not not too great i should have done a manual focus here i didn't do it oh yeah this door right here this was a telling sign for me right away is getting the number off of this door this was interesting because already i could almost make it out and that was totally different than the other zoom that we had so that number right there, that has been a major focus for me. And you could actually see the number 12 before we even got to the full resolution on the zoom. Um, and there's the manual focus just enough. And then me playing with the lighting just a little bit to see if I couldn't detail it in just a little bit more. But I'm happy with that. I am really happy with that because I did not get that before. And then there's the sign on the garbage uh, bin. And that was also new. And it punched in right there. And I was able to read the sign already. So Pete and Pete. Um, and then I'll manual focus right here for a second. And there you go. There you go. And the number, I didn't, I might be able to make that out. Yeah, it was close. I didn't look soon enough, but I think that number can be made from. So again, nice, nice added depth to the zoom with a little more clarity. That's all I really needed was a little bit more. And, and we got that in a, in a little bit more actually. So let's see what I'm doing now. Yeah, just not too many things to focus on in the in these conditions. Oh, maybe the gazebo. Yeah, the gazebo. I needed to do a manual focus here, and I didn't do it. I zoomed over to the flag instead and I didn't do a manual focus here either you can tell I didn't do the manual focus because it doesn't go out of focus real quick so that's how you know so yeah I didn't do the manual focus I should have done that but still considering it punched through all the nonsense got right in there not not too bad so what's next? 
think that's it. I'll have to bring the tree in right now. Okay, so this is the tree, and this is going to be one of the last things I focus in on. And watch the punch, and we're through it. And again, very clear, completely different than the other zoom. And you can see some real detail. Even on the tree, you could see some of the um, design on the tree itself. It looks good. It looks clean. Even in these conditions, I would be happy with that. And here I'm just getting ready to land. Spotting the lunar pad underneath me. And, uh, and then landing. And I'm going to do one more quick pan out um, before I end the flight. Yeah, there's a lot to love in the new M3. That's for sure. So I'll probably color grade this and uh, just to show an example of what that looks like. And then if you want to watch it again, you can watch it with the color grade. But yeah. Considering how nasty it was outside and being able to punch through all that nonsense, that's pretty nice. And getting a relatively clean picture, even at 28 zoom. Okay, so now it's color graded and just a little basic correction here and there. Whites, blacks, a little saturation. And you can get a better idea of just how clean a picture we can get. And again, I just love the way this thing punches through now and really starts to become really clean and, and usable because that's all we really wanted was usable footage. So there you have it. That extra little bit of color helps. So enjoy the rest of the video and find all kinds of amazing ways to use that zoom because now that it's usable it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot more fun to work with. When it comes to flying the Mavic 3 in the rain and in the snow, because you have that extra long battery time, you just want to get the wetsuit so you don't have to worry about the snow and the battery and the power button and the sensors and it's just going to protect your drone all the way around I actually smashed in to a wall and I know that the front nose of the neoprene is the only thing that saved me from breaking my Mavic 3 and so that three millimeter cushion that did it that saved my drone and it's as good as new. There's not even a scratch on it, but you can see where it hit the neoprene. It definitely would have caused some damage. So I highly recommend you get it. And if you can, the rescue jacket for the Mavic 3 is incredible because of the amount of power that the Mavic 3 has. Even if you lose five minutes of flight time, it's worth it because you can land on the snow, the water, the waves, the sand, the mud, and it provides you a really nice visual line of sight. Up to 3,000 feet, if not just a little bit more. And that's better than the light in the daylight. So if you need to see your drone, strap it on that rescue jacket, and it only takes about 10 seconds. 10 seconds to put it on, 10 seconds to take it off and it's just a blast and you'll find yourself doing things that you'd never be able to do without the rescue jacket on the Mavic 3. I don't know exactly why that is but you'll figure it out when you get it that it just gives you a such a good visual line of sight that you can do some interesting things with your drone so keep that in mind.